Thank you for listening to our Faith Temple, NFPOG, broadcast. If you would like more information about us, you can visit our website at www.ftnfcog.org. We are also on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Just type Faith Temple, NFCOG in the search. Now you can also listen to us on your favorite podcast with just a search, Faith Temple NFCOG. Listen on the go with your favorite streaming platforms, like YouTube, Spotify, Audible, Apple, Amazon Music, Google, Facebook, and Anchor Podcasts. Well, good evening, everyone. I've already spoken to Elder, but I see Deaconess has joined us. Good evening, Deaconess. McLean, how are you feeling? I'm well, thank you for asking. How are you? I can hardly hear you. I'm well, thank you for asking. How are you? Oh, good, good. Well, um, Bishop wanted us to have prayer and then go into the lesson. He and Sister Vicky had issues with the car, so they're supposed to join us, but they're not here yet. So I guess it's never, it's always a good time to pray. So if we could just take turns praying, I know with the feedback or the whatever that echo is, we can't all do it at once, but at least we can call down, as as Deaconess says, call down the thunder. Hallelujah, glory to God. If nobody else wants to start, I can start or someone else wants to start. I can go ahead, Mother. Okay. Father God in heaven, we thank you, we magnify you, and we bless you one more time, Father. We thank you for opportunities to come together and pray, God, as a church, as a group, Father. Right now, God, we lay all our petitions down, Father, before you, God, that we know that you are God that can answer prayer. Yes. Father, we just thank you, God. We just praise you, God, because you're holy, you worthy, Father. In the name of Jesus, God, we know, God, the visions you have placed on Bishop Hart, Father. So we just lay it before you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. We lay our families before you, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. We lay our lives before you, Father, because you are the God who created us. You know, oh God, your perfect plan for our lives, Father. God, help us walk into it right now, God. I Put, Father, before you, God, God, all the family members, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, that open up their hearts and their minds that they will receive you, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you right now for your plan and your will, oh God, oh Father, in our lives, God. We thank you for, God, touching everyone in faith, temple, Father. We lift up Bishop right now, God. We lift up Mother Nance, oh Father. We lift up Mama Nance, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. We ask you to touch their bodies, strengthen them, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for moving upon them right now, Father. Even, oh God, we're talking to uh, Mama Nance, oh Father, and the the and the doctor was talking about her um her heart um oh god the, the recharge the battery father yeah. and they say it's going down fast god you are the god that can hold it god you are the god that can recharge it until she goes back father we ask you right now even to touch oh god mother Vic and them that car right now god we put it before you father we god we put before you the nash family as a whole father all their children and their grandchildren father we thank you right now father in the name of jesus god that you move upon their lives oh god we thank you for the prayers of the righteous of veterans much father we thank you right now god that your prayers oh god of the righteous god in that family oh god gonna overshadow Know everything that the enemy has right now, Father, in their lives, Father. We pray right now for Dick and Tracy, God. We thank you for continuing to touch on her body, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. God, we pray for her family right now. God, we pray for uh, James, oh God, we pray for Danielle, Father. Oh God, we pray for their loved ones together. God, we pray for her grandchildren, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. We pray, oh God, that their family come together, God. We pray, oh God, that you be with them and strengthen them right now, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for your, oh God, loving arms around them, oh God, that, oh God, they would cry out, God, hold it before you, Father. And we honor you. We praise you right now, God, for right now. God, we actually touch, oh, God, um, uh, thank you, Father. Uh, Mother Smith, right now, we actually touch 
Brother Samuel and Angel, God, touch their family, right, God, bond them more together, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we build them up, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, everybody that's under the sound of my voice, everybody in faith, trouble, oh God, for the heart desire that you have for us, that we will walk into it right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God, thank you, oh God, for strengthening us, thank you for refreshing us, oh God, thank you for reviving our souls, oh God, thank you for the hunger and thirst, oh God, after righteousness that you have put in us, God, we thank you for the unction, oh God, of the Holy One that you have put in us right now, God, we thank you for the fire in our feet, oh God, that we go forth and do what you have called us to do, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray right now, oh God, God, that your Holy Spirit have your way in this place, oh God, that it will not be as if a, a regular Bible say, oh God, but your will be done, oh God, oh God, we thank you for signs and wonders even right now, Father, on the Zoom meeting right now, God, we glorify you, we honor you right now, God. Oh, God, we pray for the northern neck as a whole, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you plant us here, oh, God, for a reason, God. Let us do what you have called us to do, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, even in our community where our homes are, God, that we will be an extension, oh, God, of faith where we are at, oh, God, to do your will and do your calling, Praise you right now. We bless you right now, God. We come against everything that the enemy is trying to do, oh God. That we lay ourselves before you, oh God. That we humble ourselves, oh God. That we pray and seek your face, oh God. That we have power over the enemy right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, God. That we have a relationship with you, Father. In the name of Jesus, God. We pray. Right now, oh God, for your Holy Spirit, oh God. Oh God, the oh God that's overshadowed everything in the enemy right now, God. Right now, God. Right, right now, God. Oh Father, oh God, for the victory, oh God, that the enemy, oh God, does not have Father. We honor you. We thank you right now, God. We glorify you right now, God. We thank you right now for your movement of your power, oh God. And we honor you, Father. We thank you right now, Father. Hallelujah. 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 The floor is still open for you. I want to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you for right everything that you have done. Truly, thank you, yes, magnify you, God. You brought us, Lord, hit yes, this far, Lord. We got us from Savior, Father, and we give you the glory yes, and all the praise, God. Father. Oh, oh Father, we thank you right Lord. now. We're coming, Lord, seeking you, God. We are thirsty for the Holy Spirit. We are thirsty right now for your power, Lord. Hallelujah. We ask you, God. Oh, Lord, let the Holy Spirit have us way, Lord. Lord, fill us, Lord. Fill us with refreshing, Lord. Anointing of the Spirit, Father. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Spirit empower us, Lord. We feel to go forth, Lord. And speak your word boldly, Lord. Not only speak your word, Father, but we do your will, Father. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God. We just thank you right now. We glorify you, God. We are assembled here to God. One accord, God. We hunger and thirst after righteousness right now, God. We hunger for the movement of the Holy Ghost, God. Huh? My Lord, we thank you right now. The enemy is out there. And we rebuke him right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we glorify you, Father. Ah, Father, you get all the glory today, Father. Oh, God, we thank you for this day you've given us, Father. We bless your holy name, God. Hallelujah. You are the God. Hallelujah. You are the I am that I am, Father. Hallelujah. We are your children, God. Oh, God, we just in your words, Lord, we believe that we are praying to you, Father. You hear us, God. You we ask, God. We shall be done, God. And we thank you right now, Lord. We seek you, Lord, for the power, for the power of the Holy Spirit to move over our lives, God, and endure us with that power to go forth and preach your word, to teach your word, to live your word, Lord. Lord. Oh, God, the souls can be saved, Father, to build your kingdom, God. Hallelujah. People will be healed, Father. Oh, God, you told us we have living waters coming out of us, Father. And we're praying and blessing your name right now, God, that this be manifestation. Of, hallelujah. We come forth in your people tonight, God. Oh, Father, not just for the night, for the work that we got to do, Father. Oh, God, we just thank you right now. Bless your people, Father. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Hey, my Lord, we thank you. And we bless your name. Oh, glory to the most high God. Glory to the I am that I am. Glory to the Alpha and the Omega. Hey, glory to our creator. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, spirit of the living God, move on your people right now. Oh, God, you're calling on you, God. We want to seek your face, God. Oh, God, for you to do the work, God. Oh, God, let your anointing flow, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hey, my Lord, I thank you right now, God. We 
praying for the fully moving God. We're praying for the endowment of power, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you right now. We thank you and praise your name, God. Oh, God, we're your people, Lord. We're your children, Father. And you have no, you will hold no good here from us, God. And we thank you right now. We bless you, God. Oh, Lord, don't let the fire go out, God. Let the living waters come forth, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Touch and deliver right now. We're claiming our healing, God. We're claiming the victory that you have given us through Christ Jesus, God. Oh, Father, we thank you. Hey, my love, I shut We just thank you, Lord, for the benefits you lord us up with today god we thank you for how you get moving in our lives glory 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 hallelujah 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 bless right now father bless right now father in the name of jesus lord Oh, have your way, have your way, have your way in this house, God. Have your way in this church, Lord. We're your church, Lord, you building, God. You put us together, Father. We're just calling on you right now to do the work, God, to move on us, Father God. Endure us with your power, Father God. We've been baptized with the Holy Ghost, God. We just ask you, Lord, to refill us, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Just as you did in the Old Testament, just as you did in the New Testament, oh, Father, fill us right now, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, not for us just to have power, but to build your kingdom, God, to build your kingdom, God, to set the captives free, God, to set souls free right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you right now, we bless your holy name, we're your people you called, God, we didn't seek for you, but you chose us, Lord, so we're surrendering to you right now, we're surrendering to thy will be done, Oh, Father, and not ours, Father. Rebuke the flesh in the name of Jesus. It's been crucified on the cross, and we modify the deeds of the flesh daily, Father. Hallelujah. We come, God, to you tonight. We come seeking you, God. We come looking for your word tonight, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Bless right now, God. Bless your people. Hallelujah. And we can finally give you the glory. We won't fail to worship you, God. Worship you as a true God. We worship you as the I am. We worship you as the creator. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We bless you, God. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Hey, glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 we bless your name, 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 but life and habit always cause us to triumph in Christ's hands. Because we are yours, Lord. Because we belong to you. We are the sheep of your pasture. In the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody on this call. Every concern, whatever it is, Lord. You said to cast our cares on you because you care for us. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Help us to realize, Father, who you are. And who we are in you, that you are all mighty, you are all powerful, you are all knowing, you are all present, God. You, the God, for whom nothing is too hard. What you promise, Lord, you will perform. And your purpose and plan in this earth will not be for it. You said your word would not return unto you, Lord. You sent your son, Jesus, uh, uh, Lord, Father, your son, Jesus, into this world, Father to die for the souls of men, women, boys, and girls. You so love the world that you sent your only begotten son, that whosoever believes in you will not perish but have everlasting life. Help us, Lord, to reach out to the sinner man, to reach out to those, to be the light in the earth that you have called us to be. This change is as dark as we've, I've ever known, and I think most of us have ever known, God. But you told us in the last days there'd be perilous times. But you also said we are the light of the world. We are to be a city set upon a hill. Help us, Father, to rise up and be what you have called us to be. I come against every spirit of self-doubt. 
I come against every spirit of confusion and anything that's trying to hinder your people. Father, in the name of Jesus, help them to know that you died for them when they've accepted you as Savior. They are saved, Father. Hallelujah, that you are doing a work in their lives, Father. We are justified and we are now moving on to perfection in you, Father, as you sanctify us, as we yield, Lord, to your will and not our own. You are the author and the if we did, we'd be that capable of understanding. But we know that we serve a God who is faithful, who promised. What you promise, Lord, you will perform. We have no cause for doubt. We have no cause for anything to put our trust in you. You said trust in you with all of our heart. And we not to our own understanding, but then you will direct our path. We believe you, Lord, to order our steps, to order our speech. Whatever plan you have for Faith Temple, we believe you, Lord, to bring it to pass. I lift up Bishop. I ask you to encourage his heart. I'm asking you, Lord, to give him even more keen ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. And most of all, help all of us, God, to look to you, knowing that you are the answer to every situation. You are the way. You are the truth. You are the life. There is no, none other but you. You are the only true and living God. Glory to God. And what a privilege that you died to save us, that you brought us into your kingdom. And we are your body. We represent you in this earth. Help us, Lord, to ever be mindful of what you have called us to do. That we will walk upright before you all the days of our lives. Today. That we will do what you've called us to do, Father. That we will not fear the faces of men, Lord. That we will not be afraid to speak out and stand for what you stand for. Because it's not about us. It's not about us. It's what you are about, God. And who you are. Yes. And we represent you. And we'll be careful always to give you the glory, honor, and praise. Bless your holy name, God. Yes. Hallelujah, glory to God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you. We're going to wait for Deaconess. <laughs> Lord, I hear you in the background, Deaconess. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sand, your name is to be praised. You are now Omega, the first and the last. Hallelujah. Perfect in all of your ways. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord, I shall never forget. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Not fall to the ground, Lord, but they accomplish the purpose here with the Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We honor you, Father. We bless and praise your holy name. We extol you, O God. We recognize you. Hallelujah. It's who you are. Worthy of all the honor, worthy of all the praise, worthy of all the glory. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we see. Glory to God. Who is man that you are mindful of us? The fact that you would even think of us to say. Thank you. Thank you, my God. Hallelujah. 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 We bless his holy name. We bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We truly thank God, hallelujah, for what he's doing. We give God the glory and all the praise. We got to continue to pray, hallelujah. We are coming to the Lord. The Lord laid on my heart. We got to get this up. The power of the Holy Ghost uh, uh, that we can work in that power to build God's kingdom. Amen. And, and God is wanting us to uh, refill us, Lord, with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Just as he did. 
uh, Peter and them in yes. that room, hallelujah, they hallelujah. refilled them when they all were praying and mm -hmm. they all was on one accord, seeking God's face, hallelujah, coming unto him, not for selfish gains, but to serve his will, to do his will, amen. Mm -hmm. Uh, that and that to have the notice that we can pray and people will be delivered to speak boldly amen. and walk in that word, amen. I amen. truly thank God tonight, amen. amen. I amen. thank you, I, I, uh, you don't know how I'm trying to get down the road and amen. hallelujah to get back here, amen. I, hallelujah, I just amen. thank God hey, for the desire, amen, to be in the midst of saints to, to pray, amen. Amen. And seek God. Amen. amen. Knowing that God is everything. God is everything. He's all in all. Amen. I thank God. Amen. Uh, I think we're going to be in a treat tonight. Amen. I think Mother Smith has got a good lesson for us tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Just let the spirit move and have its way. Amen. And uh, I'd ask everybody to continue before we leave. We're gonna, I, I'm already claiming the victory in the uh, in uh, uh, Brother Herb's life, amen, from cancer, amen, and I'm claiming healing for that, amen, uh, that he's already healed, he just got to get back home, amen, hallelujah, yeah. you know the enemy going to try to put discouragement into him, put fear into him, and we know as saints of God, amen, fear cancels out faith, so we got to continue to pray through, amen, and know that God is able. And he will do what he's done. Oh, he has already done it. Amen. So, hallelujah. I'll turn it over to Mother yeah. Smith now and let, uh, let her have it way. Praise God. Well, let the Lord have his way. Because I told him earlier, Lord, you had to teach this lesson through me. I'm not depending on myself, but I'm depending on him. Amen. Glory to God. Our lesson is prove all things. It is in the... Progressive Sanctification, a book that we've been reading. Prove all things. I want to read that scripture text. It's the first one listed in the booklet. It comes from 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 21. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Hallelujah. Now that's very brief and to the point, isn't it? Prove all things. Hold fast. That which is good. Thank God. Thank you for your word. Glory to God. I want to read the uh, snapshot view of the lesson. We hear and are exposed to ideas, thoughts, opinions, and perspectives from every persuasion of life, and even doctrines from various religions. The media, with their commitment to keep the public informed, tells us on a daily basis what we should and should not do supposedly enriching and making our lives better. How do these viewpoints stand up against the rule of truth? As sanctified believers, we are challenged by God's word to prove whether these points of view are consistent with what God has willed for our lives. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. St. John chapter 8, verse 32. And the point that's being made here is that we are surrounded with all kinds of beliefs. And in this day and time, I was thinking about this earlier, there seems to be no set core of beliefs. People kind of sway whatever they think is right and try to convince the rest of the world that it's right or the rest of society that it's right. Uh, there was a time when there was a basic some basic things that everybody but I don't I don't think that exists anymore. And I can remember a saying that my mother had, and she's been dead for quite a few years now, but she said, right is standing where wrong used to be. And what she was saying is things that people used to say were wrong and everybody pretty much was in agreement about. Now they're saying it's right. So what our lesson is about is how do we know right from wrong. How do we know, and we of course know, because we are baptized believers in Jesus Christ, we know we know what is right because of the word of God. And in that verse where it says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free, that's what it's, that's what it's referring to. It's referring to the truth of God's word, which is 
unvariable. It does not change. There is no shadow of turning with God. What he said from the beginning of time is the same right now. But in man's eyes, truth is flexible. In, some, in our society's eyes, most of our society. You know, it's kind of like there, there's a saying, your truth. Well, what kind of, you have your truth and I have my truth and somebody else got their truth. I don't know about anybody else, but that kind of boggles my mind. It's like, how could there be all these different truths? How could I believe that, well, I don't know, some of the things that are taught that, that are being said now are based on truth when it's so obvious. And, and I don't want to get, get too deep into some things, that, but I'm exposed by working in a hospital. I see a lot of different things. And I've seen several situations where people have come in for surgery because they believe that how they were created, is, uh, how they were born was not who they really are. And now most of us who think back, who would think back to our parents or grandparents, what would they have thought about someone coming in and saying, you know, I was born this, but I believe I'm that. And you know what I'm referring to. Yeah. And it's so weird. It is so strange. And I have compassion for the people who are going through this because I don't believe it's, I, I believe it's spiritual. I don't think it's something people just wake up and decide I want to do. But there's something has taken control of that individual's mind that they have come to believe that who they are is not who they are and have been able to, to convince much of society that that's okay and you can get in trouble for even saying something different but truth is truth and there was one there was one glaring example of that for me because one of the people who came in for the surgery was upset because the body function that that person has because of who she is happened. I was like upset because well, my body is doing what my, I was created to do, but I don't like that. I want something different. I'm not using that to, to malign any group of people because confusion and oh, redefining of things is rampant in our society. It's not, uh, peculiar to any particular group of people, but it's what is going on with people who do not know Jesus Christ as Savior. And even some who say that they do are buying into this thing, because as it was saying in the snapshot view of the lesson, you hear so many different things. It's on the television. The peer pressure, you know, where most people, or many people, seem to be buying into things that, as I said, 30, 40 50 years ago, people would have thought, what? But now for some, it's become their truth. So I think the snapshot is kind of a, an opening to start looking at what are we hearing? What are we accepting? Because it has become the norm. And the norm means that most people are agreeing with it. So it's no longer a case that most people are agreeing with, to some degree, what the word of God said, because certainly 50 years ago, you wouldn't have bought into some of the things that people are buying into now. But that, that's not the case now. People are being fed stuff and they're buying it hook, line, and secret. But what this lesson is speaking to us as believers is we have to be able to discern the difference. All right. To be able to prove all things and hold fast to our faith because of the foundation on which we stand. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. That foundation is the word of God. It is a sure foundation. It doesn't change. People like to say, well, it's interpretation. Well, anyone who's read the word of God, <laughs> there, unless you're picking out verses and just trying to stretch that to meet something you think is accurate. But if you line upon line, precept upon precept, the word of God is consistent. So that's what our lesson is about today, that as saints of the Most High God, we have to know what the word of God says, believe what the word of God says, 
And it's, the opening text says, prove all things, but prove them according to the word of God. So I don't know who feels like, oh, let me read the points of interest. Then I'll ask someone to read the, a closer look at the lesson. The points of interest are take nothing for granted. B is retain truth. C is beware. Is there anyone that feels like reading a closer look at the lesson? A closer look at the lesson. Proving relates to the process of testing various metals by which our true nature and value of the metal is asserted. The testing is typically done by the buyer, which allows all impurities to be removed. It was with this thought, Paul admonished the saints to carefully examine everything presented to them by their belief. They were not to receive what they heard or trust with, con with confidence or just because it was the popular opinion. Hence the saints were to apply the necessary test and what they found to be true, they were to accept what was proven false, they were to reject. Thank you. All I would like to stop right there. That's what I was saying earlier, that because we are hearing and being exposed to things very frequently now that are contrary to God's word, as believers in Jesus Christ, as his blood-washed believers, we have to know truth from error. And the only way we can know that is by the word of God. Because it's kind of like being in an environment where you're surrounded by it. I, in my mind, I was thinking about a pool of water where if you submerge yourself, the water's all around you. It can feel like it, it could overwhelm you if you stuck your head under and at times in our society now, because there's all of this that's being accepted, all of this that's become normal, all of the, according to people's definitions, and be careful what I'm saying, it's not normal, but has been defined as normal by some groups. Then what do we do as people of God? When you are surrounded with all of these different voices, all these different opinions, as I said earlier, peer pressure, because peer pressure is real. You know, we may think about it as teenagers, we were subject to peer pressure, but even as adults, if you're surrounded by people who are perpetuating a certain belief and you're the, you're the outsider, you know, you're the one that is swimming upstream and everybody else is going down, how do you stand in a time like this? And I've already given the answer, but I'm trying to provoke your thought about that. Because there are some realities that we as people of God, we live in this world, but we're not of this world. So the fact that we're in it, we know what people are saying is right now, not just about sexual things, but about just about everything. That everything is kind of you, know, you can flow with it, you can accept it or reject it, you can have your own truth. But the word of God says there's but one truth, and that's his truth. He is the truth. He's the word. So I don't want to be preaching at you all, but is there anything anybody would like to contribute to what I'm saying? Mother, uh, the, a song popped in my head, an old song. That says, I know the Bible is right, yes. but it's wrong. Yes. And when we try to put our truths, if we don't even understand ourselves for the most part in the in the concept of how God created us, and and there's there's can't be a truth when everybody have a different truth. For something to be true, it has to be proven. And we have, for it to be proven, it has to be proven by, I'm sorry, in the natural, has to be proven by more than just one person. So if we all have different truths, there's nobody that we can bounce off of or, or move on, and I'm just talking about in the scientific view, to, to prove that this is true, if we all have our different truths. Mm -hmm. Because one plus one is two, and that has been proven. So if we, if somebody else is telling us different answers, 
if we all come up with different answers for the same problem, it can't be true. Something got to be wrong. Somebody has to be wrong. Because we, if we're not all getting the same answer out of the same equation, then we are then something's wrong. It can't be true. If, it, if it's being debunked by everybody because we have our own truth, something's wrong. Amen. Now you articulated well what I was trying to say. Yeah. I just want to add the uh, uh, that we, we the church face a challenge of a, of a truth now uh, uh, one of the longtime preachers out here now saying that uh, he misunderstood the scripture and now he found that uh, we shouldn't have to uh, the people, mem church members don't have to pay tithes anymore and it's going all across the you know the internet and on the TV and everything and but the truth is that, that what, Mal what God said in Malachi uh, uh, is still there. Yeah, you, you can't get around that when God said, would a man rob me? And how do they rob me? They rob me through their tithes and offering. That, that is a truth. Because the word God said, everything we have is based on uh, the truth. And his word is the truth. So uh, we got to rightly divide the word and know that when, when somebody is saying, you don't have to do this because that doesn't apply because we're in the New Testament now. We serve the same God. God said he doesn't change. His word doesn't change. Uh, it's just that man now wants to put their truth in it. Yeah. And when they put this out putting their truth, then it's, it's contrary to what God's truth is. Uh, and I think that's, I'm trying to just show you how a, a little lie and people want to believe it because they have the itchy ears. Uh, and they go along with that. Oh, yeah, I can keep my money in my pocket now. I don't have to uh, um, pay my tithes. I don't have to give back anything to God. But that's a lie. And that's what we think. you got to discern. you got to prove all things. The only way we can prove it, we have to oh, use word. this word. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing we that's, that hasn't changed. Because mm -hmm. man, things change. Yeah. They change laws. They change everything. But God's word never changed. Yeah. And that's the only truth that, that, that we can, that as uh, born again believers and children of God, we have to hold on to what this word say, not what some other opinion or what they start teaching or something different or whatever. The only thing we have is a hold back. Well, let me, let's find this in the word. And yeah. if you look in the word, God's word doesn't change. And yeah. I hope that's what it, I'm trying to get that same thing. Is this the only thing we got that truth? Because people do, mother, as you said earlier, they'll believe a lie. Mm -hmm. They if they make enough people to start saying red is now orange, people start saying it's orange. Mm -hmm. Or they say they changed that. Then now it's orange and red is orange and orange is red now. They 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 came up with something that it, they got constant lies on the internet. And people believe it, mm -hmm. and, and and the only thing we have to, I guess, Take I guess the old God. word say it, fact check it, <laughs> and, and that's the word of God. <laughs> you know, the scripture says there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is death. So yes. we can have all kinds of thoughts, but in the end, it's only what the word of God says that will last. And it's, yes. it's the way that we will be judged in eternity. God is going to, when we stand before God, what he is looking for and what he expects is that we have lived according to his word. So we can't go up and say, well, well John Jones said, and the man on TV said, and the internet said, and none of that's going to fly. And because no, Google said it. I don't think we can get that out of my mouth. But because of what they call the information age, there are all of these ideas just floating out there. And people, as you said, kind of suggested, Bishop, they're grabbing hold of whatever feels good, you know. So, oh, that sounds good. I don't have to. I can keep that 10% or oh, whatever it is. But the bottom line is God's word. That is what we have to judge everything by. That is how we prove what is true and what is not. So 
So uh, we were talking last week about witnessing to people, how people can get upset with you sometimes when you witness to them. And sometimes we're hesitant to do that because nobody wants to be rejected. But the bottom line is, it doesn't matter what I say. I could tell you, you are fine. Go ahead and do X, Y, Z. That's not going to keep you out of hell. Or if I'm telling you something that is, if I'm telling you something wrong, then I can't put you in heaven after I have given you poor advice. You see what I'm saying? So it's like when the scripture talks about broad is the way to destruction. All right. And narrow is the way. That's what it's talking about. You can get a big crowd of people to follow along with something, especially if it's a feel good kind of thing. You know, if this is something you're telling me that, all right, that kind of, I could work with that. But okay, you work with it. But if you say you're a child of God, what does that mean for you? If you're a sinner, then you do what sinners do. But as children of God, we are responsible for living according to God's word. And that's what we're going to talk about when he's going to talk to us about with Jesus. He said we're going to give an account for every idle word. Lord have mercy. Every idle one. That's pretty scary there, but I, I'm praying for the person. <laughs> But anyway, I don't mean to be making fun, but what I'm saying is that it is that serious. It is broad as the way to destruction. And then many define that way. But those of us who don't want to go the way of destruction, who don't want an eternity out, outside of the presence of God, we have to know and live according to God's word. And I put no first because so many, uh, many people are deceived because they don't know the word of God. So someone will come along and say something that, well, that, that sounds like it could be true. You know, Jehovah Witness shows up at the door and tells you about 144,000 or whatever that is, doctrine, that, but they don't believe Jesus Christ is the son of God. Well, that's the end of that story because the word of God says there is no truth outside of that. That Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is our way to salvation. So if you're telling me something other than that, but yet you've got a Bible there, you're going to open and show me some verses. That's how people are deceived. Those, that's how not being able to prove, not knowing what the Word of God ends up in disaster. So when it says here about proving God's Word, that's what it's talking about. Know it and apply it. And I also thought about the fact that as we learn of the Lord, we are able to walk in his way. As we learn his word, study his word, come to an understanding through the Holy Ghost, then things are opened up to our understanding that in the natural, we're not able to understand. So it's very important that we focus on, know that we know that we know what the word of God says. And Bible study is one of the ways of doing that. So anyway, all right, Dickens, would you go to that second chapter for me, please? Second paragraph. Yes. All doctrine should be tried by truth, the word of God. As saints of God, we are exhorted by the word of God to test whatever we hear. The testing should be done by the first by first, the Spirit of God, and second, by the Word of God. As a result, our faith will not rest upon the doctrine of men, but the authority of God. Once truth is revealed, it should be preserved by the practice of it. Truth standards against seducing doctrines, thoughts and opinions, Satan's temptations, and the world's dictates. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself, St. John 7, 17. Amen. Keep going. No, no, thank you. So as you were reading, I was wondering, can anyone think of something that you have heard? We all have could probably give examples. And initially it sounded like, well, maybe that could be true. But then as God brings his word back to you, you get, uh, uh, no, no, I can't accept that. Can you think of any examples like that? Nobody. 
I see the wheels turning in Elvis' head. Well, I, I was thinking um, a lot of the church sayings that we hear that not in the Bible, a lot of, you know, uh, of them. And I was, a whole lot of stuff I was thinking about. I, I'm trying to break it down to just what you said, because my mind is still going on what Bishop said earlier. But with the um, with, with some of them and people put them to the heart, and then they found out that with me, a lot, of the, a lot of the stuff I heard growing up, but then when I actually started reading the Bible and studying the Bible for myself, I'm like, this is not in the Bible. But people take it to heart and do it. And, I, you know, you hear the ones come as you are or um, once they've always saved or um, the, uh, you know, we all going to heaven and how God loves us. No, he's not going to send us to hell because how, how can a loving God send us to hell? And stuff like that, and you 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 hear stuff like that um, going on. But when you when, when you grab hold of what they are saying, and actually start reading for yourself, this this is the whole. I'm I'm not trying to take over, but the whole thing of this lesson is that they just didn't accept what Paul and them said. They took time and actually got in the Bible daily and started reading for themselves. It came to the understanding that what he was saying was true. And that's not going on now. We just take what people say um, for as, as, as God's word or what people say. And then me, I guess, being the youngest, even though I'm not that young, but you no, know, seeing a whole lot of things that or people send me posts that somebody said this on the internet, said that on the internet, and there's a whole there's a whole comment section saying, Yeah, this is that's right. You you preaching this, and I'm like, this is not biblical. But they they but they preaching this, and they in the whole comment section saying, yeah, this is right. So me, I'm just looking because if I even comment that no, this don't this not biblical, you know, we, I'm gonna get shot down in the comment section. I'm not one of the people that argue online anyway. But when you have a whole group of people saying, yeah, this is this is right, they're not going into the word of God from themselves because if they go into the word of God from themselves. They realize what they doing is wrong. Some of them actually realize what they doing are wrong is wrong, but they want to find somebody else to agree. And I'm not trying to change what you said earlier, but um, but that you know, just hearing things that and people they just find. I think we talked about that last week. Itchy ears, and the teachers that will teach what they want to hear, so they can say I'm gonna be able to stay in my mess well they're not gonna call it mess because if i call it mess i'm judging them and that's a whole nother conversation for another time but you know so i can stay in doing what i'm doing because it feels all right to me and since i got somebody a preacher of the gospel saying that it's okay for me to do this and live this i'm okay so they're getting into the word and finding out that it's not okay and that's that's ironic. I was referring to that earlier about someone telling you something is right when it's inconsistent with God's word. All that means is you could go to hell and the person telling you that go to hell unless you repent. In, in eternity, it doesn't matter whether I sanction it if it's contrary to God's word or whoever sanctions it. The ultimate authority is the word of God. But when you were talking, I was thinking about some some of the, as you said, some of the sayings in church. But one of the things that I think has, maybe I should say damaged people, but I think it has caused some confusion with some people, some lack of understanding, and that is the prosperity gospel. You send me a hundred dollars and God's gonna make you a millionaire. Or uh, send me 250, you can pay that $84 a month for, for a year, whatever, whatever the formula is all worked out. And there are some people genuinely wanting, I believe, to live according to God's word, but not having an understanding of what the word of God says. That's why it's imperative on us to know what the word of God says for ourselves. So that when someone basically is acting as if the word of God is a slot machine, you, know, you put this in here and then you're going to get this back. Well, then God promised to bless his people. But he didn't tell us he was going to do it at our bidding. He didn't tell any of us that, okay, you send $50 and by in 10 days, you're going to get 500. I have heard all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And I've wondered, 
what impact it has had on some people who did not understand, did not know, mm -hmm. maybe thought for well, themselves right. And may have done what has been suggested. Put it on your credit cards, send your rent money. None of that is scriptural. Yeah, not, yeah, oh, sorry, I ain't, ain't meaning what the control, but it takes away from God because yeah. all people understand is no, this is God. So when it doesn't work like the people are saying, they don't look at that person. Some people do, but most people look at God. This is how God, God is not who he say he is because I gave um, this man $5,000 and I needed $1,500, I mean, 15000 for X, Y, and Z. And I gave the man of God, a woman of God, this, and God, and he told me that God was going to supply my need and it didn't happen. So now I'm, I don't trust God anymore because God didn't do what I asked him to do. Yeah. I don't trust God anymore because of that. And I have seen people uh, say that in, or, or, uh, uh, and stuff like that because their mindset of who God is, is relying on what the man of God, if, if we could say that, I don't want to disrespect anybody, but what the man or woman of God is doing and they taking, like you said, making God out of a slot machine. I hear people say that people want the blessings, but not the blesser. So when they have a desire for God, I serve a God who's going to bless. And you you preached that a uh, couple months ago, that 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 I'm blessed thing that you know what people think blessed is, and long as they are receiving the quote unquote blessings from God, they feel like they are at a a particular place in God, and but they don't want the blesser, they don't want God. Long as he's handing out, long as he's being the sugar daddy. Or, or if like I said, I don't want to fit nobody or or all that, you know, they are okay in church. They are okay. As long as I'm getting out what I want from God, I'm okay. But when he tells me to fast and pray and seek my face and get into the word of God and study to show yourself approved unto God. Because there's a lot of people, and I'm trying not to change, uh, but because a lot of people study to prove themselves under man, but unto God, then that's when the issues come because they don't have an understanding of who God is because they always seen God as this, this, I don't want to say pimp or whatever in, in, in the church because that where people have programmed them to think, if I give you this, then God's going to give me that. And that lack of understanding comes from a lack of knowledge of God's word. And that's what our lesson is focusing us on. That we're to know God's word and we're to try everything according to his word. So someone can't come along and confuse you or deceive you by telling you something that's unscriptural. So uh, let me continue on. I'm going to give Deacon this a break. Apostle Paul traveled to various cities, Thessalonica, Athens, etc. During his missionary journeys, preaching the truth of God. As was his custom, he went to the synagogues declaring Jesus Christ, his crucifixion and resurrection. Some believed the message of Paul and some did not. The mixed reviews caused him to take the gospel to the Gentiles who received the word of God readily. Such was the case of the saints at Berea. These were more noble than those in Thessalon Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were true. Acts 17, 11. Let's understand clearly the implications of this passage. Although they received what Paul said to them, they invested their time and energy searching, within the, written, searching the written word available to them to make sure the message held up against truth. They realized their salvation was at stake and whatever taken in would temper their spirit. In addition, the word was not accepted just because they had confidence in Apostle Paul. As a result of their diligent search, they embraced truth and believed what they heard about practicing it causing them and the church to grow. 
So again, and that was the, the sep I didn't read the scripture, but she's referring to that scripture in Acts. It's in our lesson, Acts 17, verses 10 through 12, where some didn't receive the word, but others received the word and they readied themselves. They received the word with readiness and they had a desire to know God, to know his word. And that is what the Lord is challenging all of us and what is necessary for all of us to do is to read God's word, understand his word. All of us can help each other in some way in these Bible lessons to, if there's some questions or need for clarification. But the bottom line is to know God for yourself. And the only way you're going to do that is to know his word. So as I say here, they didn't even take Paul's word for just, I'm sure Paul was instrumental in leading them to God. But they still tried what he said according to the scripture. Now, maybe repeating this over and over again, but it's a very important detail because it takes a certain discipline. And because we live in the information age, we live in an age where basically people's attention spans have been shortened because we're used to everything fast. You know, you can't deliver it in like 10 seconds. Somebody's mind won't at all. So we have to say some God make that concerted effort. And I can relate to anybody who might look at the Bible and say, well, it can be kind of overwhelming because yes, it can be. But number one, as we were praying earlier with the guidance of the Holy Ghost, he will direct us, open up our understanding. Perhaps start with, if you have a certain issue, for example, if it's an issue of well, what is sanctification? We've talked a lot about it. Or questions about uh, sin, or sin, or questions about how do I have peace? Question about, you know, how do I manage money? Do I need to pay tithes? Know God's word for yourself. Nobody, I don't start where you can start, but make a commitment to do it consistently. And daily, it's possible we do some things gropely, you know, we just there's a part of our routine. Make God's word, and I'm encouraging all of us, a part of our routine. And you may have to take little bites, you know, because not many of us can read from Genesis to Revelation, but we can study his word to the point that we understand what we need to know to live according to his word. Of the basic tenets of the faith are there. The guidance on the daily walk with God is there. Now we got Google. People used to have to leap back to the concordance and search through and try to find with the word, like if you had a question about, I don't know, fornication or something. You, you could you go in the back and look for that, look at all these scriptures listed. Now you, there are Bible searches, there are online uh like bible gateway bible search is one that i use a lot you just need to put a fraction of a scripture in there it'll pull it up for you so there is no lack of ways of knowing god for yourself but to not know him for yourself is dangerous and risky for our eternal souls so i do want to read what it says in acts 17 verses 10 through 12 because i feel like i, I missed that I don't know if uh, Elder can put that back up, but it says, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night into Berea. So these were the people who rejected the Lord, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks and of men, not a few. So in saying that, because so often people don't recognize women's participation in, in the history of the Bible or in the Bible, but women have always been involved. Jesus elevated the statue of women as opposed to what was common in that day because he acknowledged women and used women in ways that had not been done before. But the point is here, there was one group of people who sent them away, rejected what they said. There was another group of people who received the word gladly. They received it with readiness. 
And when they received it, they had that hunger and thirst that Bishop was talking, praying about earlier, to know him, to know his word, to read his word, to understand who he is, because there's no way to know him without knowing his word. Otherwise, you walk around just kind of getting bits and pieces here and there. You get the bits and pieces and try to put them together, but you can't really do that because the word of God is line upon line and precept upon precept. So I want to encourage myself and everyone listening tonight. Allow the Lord to show you what is an area that perhaps you could start with studying God's word so that you, if you have some doubts, if you have some questions, Whatever we have need of is in the word of God. Every, and and that, that may be hard for some to believe because here's this book written thousands of years ago. But yet there's truth. I remember, Pastor, this is kind of an off subject, I guess, but Pastor Paul told me one time that the scripture talked about airplanes. I didn't believe it. And how it talked about cars. But there is a scripture that talks about um, vehicles jostling against one another and, and just different things that shows you that the scripture god knows the end from the beginning yes the end from the beginning so there's nothing new under the sun to him so because the bible was written a thousand years ago or many thousand ago it doesn't matter because of the god's word because it came from god who knows all things from now through eternity even beyond now, but from the forever to eternity. So what he has written in his word is from everlasting to everlasting. So we are missing out if we don't read his word. We're missing out even for some of the things in daily life, some of the mistakes we've made in life. We would not have made had we known what the word of God said and obeyed God's word. I know I wouldn't have. Because everything that pertains to life and godliness is in God's word. And anything that we are hearing that's contrary to God's word, and we're hearing a lot these days, as you said in the, uh, the opening part about a snapshot view of the lesson, there are all kinds of voices, the television, the internet, and many of them, most of them, are contrary to what the word of God says. But those of us who believe in Jesus Christ, those of us who want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant, it is the word of God that we have to know and we have to live by. And when I was reading that, I know that's talking about prove everything according to the word of God. But I also was thinking about how when we allow ourselves to know what the word of God says, to believe God's word, to step out on God's word, how the Lord proves himself. You know, so often faith is lacking because we fail to do what God has challenged us to do. Just as he said with tithes, he said, prove me. When you, by giving your tithes, you prove me. I will show you that what I will do for you. His word is like that throughout because there is nothing that he has promised that he will not perform. He said his word will not return unto him void. However, if we don't know his word, if we don't live according to his word, we live beneath our privilege. So I feel like I'm kind of preaching tonight, and I don't want to do that, but labor your, your ears. But I, I do want to encourage, I'm, when I'm talking to you, I'm talking to me too, to read his word, study his word, live his word, and watch what he does in our lives, because he is faithful. He watches over his word to perform. And anything that is contrary to what he says is not truth. It is a lie. Satan is, was a liar. For, he is a liar. He's a deceiver. He's the father of liars. So this stuff, much of what we're hearing now about what is acceptable in society is right out of Satan's playbook. It's his deception. It's his lies that are capturing the minds of men and women because they have not accepted Christ. And some who maybe go to church or whatever don't know enough about the word of God to prove it. So anyway, I pray that everyone got something out of this lesson tonight. I, it is such, 
there is no way, I don't know how to express what joy, what peace there is in knowing God, to know his faithfulness, to know his word. When things happen, to be able to say what God's word says and to trust him, to know that he is faithful. I use that a lot in different things that I'm doing just to take the opportunity to write it, like when I'm typing or creating a password or something. I'd like to say something about God's faithfulness because that's who he is. I love you all. Anybody else got any comments they want to make? Well, either bored to the death or you're going to sleep on me or whatever. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I did, but I, I was gonna try to wait. But go ahead, Mitchell. I, I, I was gonna I just just be encouraged to let everybody, what mother, put the challenge before us to go out and and uh, and uh, really dig in the word and find a spotting point somewhere that you feel comfortable with and get in that word. Uh, one thing I like when we read that the people in Berea, they heard what Paul said. When you hear the preacher, any preacher say anything, include myself. Mm -hmm. Go to the scripture, study the scripture, mm -hmm. search the re reference scripture, this and to that, until you get an understanding, mm -hmm. uh, and that your understanding is different, then, then, then it come together and we talk about the word of God and let the spirit of God teach the word to us, amen? Mm -hmm. uh, what, I just don't want to be discouraged, but like the, the enemy, is always trying to stop us from studying the Word of God. Mm -hmm. If you read in there, Mother stopped at uh, chat, verse chat, Acts 10, I mean 17 and verse 13, I think it was. And uh, But the next verse said, the people in Thessalonica heard that Paul was teaching Berea the Word and they had accepted the Word of God. They went to, the Bible said, they went over there and stirred the people up so that they could tell Paul uh, to leave there so they wouldn't teach the word no more. Mm -hmm. So in it, when you get into this word, don't think that the enemy is not going to try to put doubt in your mind of what you heard tonight or what you're going to find out through your studying uh, that, that it's not true. You got to know what the word of God says. And believe what God says and practice what God's word says. Don't be discouraged. Don't let anyone around you discourage you from the word of God and what the word of God says. Because they will come. And, and you veteran saints know that the enemy is here, out here to kill, steal, and destroy. And he don't he don't care who it is or who he used. Okay. Hallelujah. He'll use your closest loved one. He'll use your closest friend, family member, anybody to discourage you from trusting God's word and knowing God's word. Amen. So I just thank mother for the thing. I'm looking forward to the rest of this lesson. Amen. Uh, and everything. Pray saints. I, I, I'm, all, I'm, uh, I got, I'm seeking God for the, the power. <laughs> I, I want big temple to have the power. I want uh, the, the only way we're going to start uh, this great movement of God and what God has put in us is to seek God. Know Him, seek Him, thirst after Him, turn and come to Him and, 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 and just humble ourselves and, and let God, that we get on one accord and let God's power be endured in us that we can speak that word boldly. Amen. Go ahead, Elder. I'm a... I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> But you said most of what I was going to say, but the, the main thing I wanted to say was you have to know God's word to be able to prove it. And so if you don't study, when somebody says something, you're not going to know. And so right. that was uh, the, the, the main thing. And then the other thing is that um, we have to understand that we know that there's no amendments in God's word. I was thinking, I was thinking, um, when I was talking about the Constitution, when it was written, there was 10 points given in the Constitution. It was only 10 points. But after a while, they said, well, we get to amend some of these things in the Constitution. And basically, it's saying what we said in the Constitution, 
ah, we don't mean it right now. We don't really mean that anymore. So we need to amend what because what amend means. But there's no amendment. God dropped that. There's no there's no amendment in the Bible. When he said it and when it was written, it did not change. There's no we can't oh say this is this 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 is the twenty first century now. X Y Z doesn't mean what it meant back then. You know that there's no uh there, there's no judicial board or that can come and say well this scripture was meant for X Y Z now it don't mean that anymore. God word don't change. His word stays the same. So if we have to study it and and we have to apply the word to ourselves. We have to take the word and apply it to ourselves. See, what we want to do is take the word and try to form it to what we want it to be formed as. But the word doesn't do that. The word does the opposite. We, the word takes us and then forms us into what God wants us to be. But we have to study and understand what God's word is so we could be able to prove it. If we don't study, then we don't we can't prove it. So anything that somebody could say, you know, don't don't be so quick when sometimes we people in church, you quickly hear them say amen, you know, agree. Uh, amen means that I agree. <laughs> so you got to understand what the word of God said. And you see that the, that they took Paul's word. But they made sure what Paul was saying backed up what in the scriptures. So we got to make sure, and I'm not saying that Bishop doesn't do that and Mother, oh, I don't do that. But you got to make sure that you just can't take, that's why you can't, I'm trying to close it. That's why you can't take, you just can't listen to what God say on Sunday, then the rest of the week, you just do whatever you want to do. That's why you got to apply that and study that. Take take what that, that's why I used to tell people I don't I didn't like going out to eat after church on Sundays because I always like going home and just re and rehearsing the word that I heard in, in my mind and just meditating on the word. That's why I ain't like the churches always want to go out to eat. Not saying nothing wrong with it after after service because I'm like I want to you know just because sometimes me being a musician and doing so much stuff in church I can't process it to after afterwards. So I like to go home and process it, you know, and sometimes that, you know, you can take a, take a week off, you know, take the whole week and sometimes processing what God was saying to us. So that's what they was doing. They took what uh, Paul said, and I'm trying not to be long, and just processed it. <laughs> and so that's what I'm just telling you how to do. So I'm, now I'm going to mute my mic. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Uh, and while Elder was talking, I just, uh, I thought it came to me about uh, uh, that word and how we should have read. And he said the amendment of the Constitution. Well, you know, we go in the Old Testament, there's a whole list. It's more than just 10 commandments. But Jesus knew that man was going to be challenging. He said, all right, I'm just going to give you two. Mm -hmm. On these two hang all the commandments. <laughs> so if you can't remember all of them, I'm just going to give you two. Yeah. And that is the love the glory of Lord God, and love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't go wrong with them too. You know, it ain't got you to go down here and do all this. Just those two is all Jesus said. If you can do these two, you include all the rest of them. You got it all, all the rest of them gonna be included. So I just think that's how smart our God is. Y'all ain't gonna be amending my stuff. I'm gonna break it down so you can't go no lower than <laughs> just gave us two now. You, now get around them two, then you'll be all right. But in them two, uh, if we can just keep those two, uh, we'll be all right. Amen. I, again, I just thank God, amen, for how our God just loves us and makes things so simple for us. He knows, like Mother said, the end, the end, the end, of, the end at the beginning, amen. He already knew what was going to happen. Uh, one thing for we, uh, and I'll let you close out in prayer, Mother, is uh, pray for uh, Vicky's brother, uh, who are all her brothers. They're uh, like sickness and ill, and, and uh, is trying to go through the family. So yeah. just pray and uh, for her, uh, them to be saved yeah. and uh, and be and God through that salvation, God would heal them physically and spiritually. Yeah. Amen. So, Amen. Uh, Amen. On you, Mother. All hearts are clear. They say, Father, we thank you for this time of studying your word and preaching, teaching yes, us, Lord. Lord. Help us to sink into our hearts, Lord. Not let us just be hearers of the word, but let us be doers of the word, Lord. Instill and stir up in each and every one of us, Lord, a desire, a hunger, a thirst to know you the more, to know what you've said, Lord. 
not to depend on ourselves or depend on other people, Lord, but you are a personal Savior. Help us, Lord, to get into your word, to know who you are. You said, I stand at the door and knock. Yes. And Lord, you, all we got to do is invite you in. We invite you in, Lord, by drawing near to you. We invite you in, Father, by seeking your face and knowing what you said in your word, God. And we love you and praise your holy name. I lift up Sister Vicky's brothers, Lord. You know each and every one of them. We don't know all the names. I don't know all the names, Lord, but you do. You know every hair on their heads, Lord. You have a purpose and plan for their lives, Lord. And we speak right now, Lord, that you will bring healing, deliverance. You'll set them free from sin. You'll save their souls. And whatever your will is, Father, if they continue in this life or eternal life, let it be with you, God. Bless your holy name. I thank you for the people gathered here tonight, Lord. I pray that each one has heard something that they can take to heart that it applies to each individual, Lord. Because as I said before, we have a, you want a personal relationship with us that we can grow in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Bless your people as they go forth tonight. Let them continue to be safe. Give them a blessed week and meet all of their needs, Father, according to your riches and glory. Amen and amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for your word. Amen.